Welcome to Open House with Jerry Cornejo, where we feature people, places, and things that are in the news or who should be in the news. And uh, for this program, we're going to be talking about some very, very interesting topics of uh, national concern. And uh, the program is all about the law and legal hotspots. Okay, we'll be talking about uh, the new graduates or people intending to... Uh, go into law school and we'll be talking also about uh, the things that are on the front pages of all the newspapers and even international papers and we have with us a person who uh, needs very little introduction is uh, we've seen him on the front pages of uh, the newspapers we've seen him on primetime TV and of course uh, one of the legal uh, luminaries of our country and of our region the attorney Raymond Fortune. Attorney Raymond, welcome again. Okay. Actually, third time na ni Attorney Raymond uh, Fortune dito. The second time, it was about his being a wedding photographer. Right. If we have time, we'll talk about that. Ngayon, uh, Attorney uh, Raymond Fortune, uh, how long have you been a lawyer? 25 years. Wow. Uh, I, I uh, graduated in 1988, and oh. uh, in fact, our law batch just recently uh, had our silver anniversary. Okay, I mean, uh, wow, well, I was expecting, I mean, from, from the way you look, sabi ko, baka 10 years. Can, you, can you imagine how I looked like when I just graduated? <laughs> Mukha akong parang pinabili lang na nanay ko ng suka. And that was a problem that I had before. Huh? Uh, 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 you know, even yung the first uh, big law firm that I joined, mm. uh, that's Sisip Salazar, Hernandez, and Gatmaitan. Uh, I looked so young <laughs> that they asked me, uh, to wear a mustache and to wear glasses, just so I can look a little bit older. <laughs> and more credible, siguro. Well, certainly. Because <laughs> I mean, I was thin. Uh, uh, yung hair ko, talagang, uh, uh, ano, talagang masyadong manipis din. Ano? I mean, I wanted it really clean cut. So, gupit binata. Uh, no? uh, and I really looked very young no? uh, for, for my age. I, if you will recall, even nung the 2000, when I became part of that very first impeachment trial oh, the era. Estrada, oh, I, oh, oh. people thought I was just a fresh graduate when in fact I had already been practicing for 12 years at that time. I thought that. Psycho, sino ito? Sino, who, who, who's this guy? I mean, because that was the first time, I guess, uh, you were uh, in media. First yes. time you were in the public eye. Yes. Siguro before that, marami ka mga high profile cases, but uh, ito. Ano ito? I mean, this was a... Uh, front and center. Oh, front and center ito, hindi ba? Parang right. Every day, uh, lawyers Sino ito? Here. Raymond Fortune. I mean, yung mga iba, medyo merong, merong nang dating yung pangalan, di ba? Sina Cuevas, sina... Oh, yes. Uh, diba? Si, ano, Estelito Mendoza. Ayan, uh, ganyan, si di ba? Si Justice Narvasa. Ayan. <laughs> Tapos, Raymond who? Hindi ba? After that, that was it. That was the last time people said, Raymond who? After that impeachment case. Imagine, I mean, kung piliin ka naman siguro ng... Pangulo ng Pilipinas para ipagtanggol siya, meron kang sinasabi. Ngayon, okay, uh, Attorney Raymond Fortune, punta muna tayo ngayon sa ano, uh, there are a lot of college graduates now, yes. or about to graduate, na iniisip nila, gusto ko maging abogado, I want to be a lawyer. And then there are those who just graduated, who just passed the bar. Mm -hmm. And then there are those, pinapag-usapan pa nila sa mga magulang nila, dad, mom, Gusto ko maglo, di ba? Sabihin siguro na, hindi, hindi, mag ano ba? HRM ka, or <laughs> whatever, di ba? Now, question is this. What does it take to be a good lawyer? Because unique, it's a unique animal, being a lawyer. Di ba? It's, iba yan, you need different sets of skills. So, you, from you, I mean, nandiyan ka na, 25 years, and you've handled some of the biggest cases in our history. What does it take to be a good lawyer? You just have to be very hardworking and persevering. Uh, you should not refuse to give up nor, or to succumb to, to the concept of failure. Mm -hmm. uh, failure is going to be part of, of handling a case. No? I mean, I, I can tell you that no lawyer in this country has ever uh, has won every, every case that he's handled. Mm -hmm. so one time or another, you're just going to fail. No? I, I guess that also uh, uh, no, applies to every other profession there is. But especially in law, where stakes are a lot, a lot higher, mm -hmm. no? because you're dealing not with your own problems, with somebody else's problem, who is actually relying so much on your expertise. Right. So if you want to be a good lawyer, you really just have to be very, very hardworking, meaning uh, know your law, know the facts of the case, um, know all, all it takes 
all what it would take in order to get a decision in your favor. And then there's the other part, which is persevering, which means that um, there will be times when you will not get the result that you wanted, mm -hmm. and yet have the determination to push through despite the setbacks. Ngayon, if you are after uh, financial wealth, financial success, is law the way to go? It would depend on the kind of field that you want to be in. May no? gusto nila siguro, law, yung mga iba talaga, it's a vocation for them. Yes. Like, gusto kong tulungan ang mga mahihirap, hindi ba? Uh, I want to fight injustice. Ngayon, meron naman na gusto kong kumita ng malaki, mm -hmm. di ba? Mm -hmm. Of which, you see lawyers also on both sides of the fence. You see, right. and sometimes, the best of both worlds, yung mga iba, pinagtatanggol na nila yung mahirap, and nakikita mo, yung mayaman sila. Diba? So, what is it? Ano bang priority? Like, meron bang mindset na pag ganyan ang mindset mo, buti, huwag ka na maging abogado? Ganyan? Meron bang ganon? Hindi, hindi. In Wala fact, naman. Ano, in, in fact, uh, if you're somebody who really wants to help the oppressed, then it's the law. Eh, kung gusto mong yumaman. Kung gusto mong yumaman, then mas lalo rin kung gusto mong abogado ka. <laughs> Pwede rin, ha? O oh, yun yeah. din. Oh. Kasi ano eh, like, like you know, um, the, the good thing about the legal profession is that it's practically needed every, everywhere. Eh. Mm -hmm. uh, kung simpleng paggawa ng kontrata or the more complicated contracts between multinational companies mm -hmm. or the ultra uh, difficult kind of contracts such as those between yung the, that recent uh, agreement between the Bank Somoro Nation mm -hmm. and, and, and the Republic of the Philippines. Uh, how about uh, bilateral treaties mm -hmm. between countries? No? Yan, kontrata lang ang usapan dyan. You're gonna need lawyers to be able to put it all together. From womb to tomb. How, how hmm. about ano, how about those who, uh, who who need to settle problems between families? Mm -hmm. No? Yung nagkaroon ng problema, ultimo na inheritance na lamang. Kailangan yes. mo na abogado for that. Yes, yes. And then you now have the difficult conflicts, you know, between neighbors where magkakaroon ngayon ng either civil civil cases kung dispute lang sa property, yung boundary lang nung kanilang ano, nung kanilang lupa, saan mag-uumpisa, baka merong encroachment. How about ngayon yung pag nagkaroon na ng sakitan? Yung pag nagkasuntukan yeah. or meron na nga talagang nasakta ng uh, husto. Little things like may sinulat na masama sa Facebook <laughs> or may nasulat ngayon uh, doon sa dyaryo. Then, I mean, you can imagine the amount uh, and breadth of help that uh, the public needs a lawyer for. Mm -hmm. And so, I'm talking about really law actually being an essential part uh, because there will always be a dispute. There will yeah. always be conflict between people. I mean, kung lahat ay nagkakasundo, kung lahat ay with goodwill towards each other, if everybody treats each other equally and properly uh, and with fear of the Lord, mm. you're not going to need lawyers. In but an ideal world. In, that's in an uh, ideal in world. A, in utopia. utopia. Yeah, no. That's right. Uh. No? Pero dito sa atin, that's not going to happen. So you're going to mm. need lawyers. And um, you'll be surprised, Jerry, na the reason why the pace of uh, cases in this country is so slow mm -hmm. is because there is such a, a, a high demand for lawyers. Walang mga fiscal. Mm -hmm. Kulang na kulang mga fiscals, lalong lalo pa sa probinsya. Mga judges, there are not enough people who want to become judges. Mm -hmm. Uh, for one reason or another. You mean sa merong mga na, na, naging abogado na at lahat and then hindi magpa-practice. Mas gusto na lang magbenta na lamang to just to, to run the family business or what. So, there really is a high demand for lawyers but not enough law students. Okay, ngayon, if you're a lawyer, pwede mong tunguhan what they call the bench and bar. Diba? You can uh, be a lawyer or you can be in the judiciary. Ganun ba? Yes. Yun ang pwede ka maging judge, pwede ka maging justice. So, hindi ka pwede maging judge, hindi ka pwede maging fiscal, hindi ka pwede maging justice kung hindi ka abogado. Tama? Yes, that's okay. correct. So, lahat yun. I mean, hindi ka tulad ng presidente kahit anong profession mo correct. pwede. But sa legal uh, system, sa, sa judiciary, kailangan abogado ka. That's correct. That's it. Period. That's right. Okay. So, that's why we need, we okay. need more lawyers sa... Uh, entering law school. So, so pinaka-specialized pinaka yan because sa uh, legislative, hindi naman kailangan abogado. Di ba? Hindi. Hindi kailangan. Oh, uh, <laughs> sa executive, hindi rin. That's correct. So, sa judiciary, kailangan. Yes. Okay. Ngayon, uh, there, why, why do they call it, I'm just curious, ang medicine at saka ang law, why do they call it the practice? Because you're just practicing? <laughs> Why is the term practice? Why, bakit ganun ang term? Like, oh, he's a, he has a good practice in medicine. And he has an excellent practice in law. 
Bakit practice ang tawag? I mean, curious lang ako. I, I haven't oh. really you know, found out why it's, <laughs> it's called that way. Oh, no? practice eh. Oh, oh. Di ba? Yeah. I mean, uh, kasi mga iba, you know, it's a profession. Di ba? Well, the, oh. the, the, the phrase is to practice your profession. Oh, oh, oh. So, I guess it has uh, something to do with, yung, it may be a profession in itself. Meaning, oh. you get a title, mm -hmm. no, pero... Uh, if you are not really doing the work for which you are being called, mm -hmm. then you are essentially not really practicing. Uh, Chakay sa pato ni Raymond Fortun. I correct me uh, in this, no. Pero pagdating sa law, just like medicine, walang katapusan ang pag-aaral. I mean, because with law, I mean the law is constantly fluctuating, di ba? Mm -hmm. Merong jurisprudence. Meron kung so in other words, yung batas ngayon baka hindi na batas bukas, baka hindi na oh, batas next sure. year. For sure. Okay. Di ba, you just take a look at the legislature. They mm -hmm. pass laws mm -hmm. eh, you know, as as often as, as uh, they are able to complete all the work, no? And um, when when it comes naman then to education, the Supreme Court even requires lawyers to have what is known as a mandatory continuing legal education, meaning um, we are required no na every 3 years to basically go on a refresher course. Talaga? 36, yes, 36 okay. units yun. We have to sit down and have ourselves accredited by the Supreme Court. Ginagawa ng lahat ng abogado yan? All lawyers have to undergo that. It's not like yung, okay, once na makapasa ka yeah. ng bar, uh -huh. eh, okay ka na, pwede ka na. No. no? The Supreme Court requires Stop. us to uh -huh. undergo a refresher uh, every three years. And it's monitored by the Supreme Court. If you do not comply, you will be suspended from practicing the profession. How about the judges? Are they, there's, is there any such requirement for judges? Uh, kaya pala na, na, na ano sila <laughs> ng gross ignorance of the law? Ang Di nangyayari siguro meron oh. rin sila mga seminars. Uh, okay. I understand that the Philippine uh, uh, Judges Association oh. has regular seminars also for judges. Um, Ano din naman, meron din naman sila mga refreshers of sorts, no? pero no. not as rigid as the lawyers. Kasi lawyers talaga, 36 units yon and iba-ibang fields. No? Okay. For example, it's not like, for example, oh, I'm, I'm into civil and criminal litigation, na ang ifo-focus ko lamang na pag-aaralan, eh yun lamang dun sa field ko. No, you're, you're to learn all about the other fields as well. Uh, immigration, um, uh, mining and, and construction. Uh -huh. Uh, arbitration, you you're all have to go through here. Uh, you have to familiarize yourself with the new tax laws. And even if you don't, you, if you are not interested in it, even if it's not part of your practice, uh -huh. you have to sit there, listen to the to the speaker uh -huh. for you to get a, accreditation. Okay. Pero walang test naman yan, nalalagpa ka. Wala. Ah, okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Kaya nga so, mag-attend ka lang. Oh, yung mag-attend uh, ka lang, you get uh, accredited, no? Ngayon, nasa sayo na yun, ano? Merong mga uh, ibang tao who uh, just goes there, probably sits there, physically is uh, there, pero tutulog. yung utak nila, wala naman okay. doon, ano? But, uh, 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 if you really are uh, serious about your practice, you listen, because there are really okay. a lot of things you can learn. Before we finish this segment, I'm just curious also, and I'm sure marami rin curious yan, pag bago kang graduate ng law, you just pass the bar, yeah. Magkano mga starting salary niyan? On the average, on the average, I'm sure you're, you you have a ballpark figure. Yeah, on the average, probably mga 30,000 pesos. Per on the hour, average, uh, per, per month. Oh. Okay, so... If you're in the uh, government, uh, siguro yung mga mag-ipiskal mag ka, mm. siguro baka mga nasa 24, 25,000. Okay. Uh -huh. On the other hand, if you join the big law firms, mm. um, for, for the training you're getting, probably mga nasa 35 to 38,000 a month. Okay. Now, I have heard just recently, you know, na yung mga, some of the component cities, yung mga mayayaman ng mga cities uh, like Quezon City, Paranaque, Makati, Makati uh, uh, even Pau lawyers get really, really high because of their basic salary at saka yung allowances nila. Uh, 35 to 40, that's what I heard. Okay, so now there you go, people. Ha? I mean, kung if you're gonna study pesos and centavos, at ang tingin nyo sa, well, Pwede namang pag-usapan ng mga magulang yata, no? Diba? Yeah. Tuition mo, ganito. Kikitain mo pala, starting mo, average 30. Teka muna, ilang daan libo ba? <laughs> but then that's not the case. If you're just uh, going to compute, kung lahat po ang computation ang gagawin nyo to the profession that you're going into, eh siguro mag-banking and finance ka na lang, no? But not the practice of law, not the practice of medicine, na para pong halos kahawig na ng the religious profession yan, halos parang pari na kayo yan. Anyway, we are, uh, our guest po natin is Attorney Raymond Fortun. When we come back, we're going to talk about hotspots, what's going on now in Philippine society. 
and the possibility of seeing some very uh, high government officials behind bars. Mangyayari kaya yon. When we come back, we'll be talking about that. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Open House with Jerry Cornejo, where we feature people, places, and things that are in the news or who should be in the news. And what we're talking about now, if you were uh, tuned in earlier, we were talking about the law, the practice of law. Uh, you want to be a lawyer for new lawyers. Uh, you have a father and children talking about going to law, lalong lalo na pag ang mga magulang nila o wala pang lawyer sa family nila, medyo ano yan, ano. But we were discussing that earlier. And uh, we came up with very interesting insights with uh, someone who has been a lawyer for the past 25 years. And uh, also someone who's been handling uh, very, very high profile cases. The highest profile na siguro, eh, yung first time yang nakita natin siya sa media, this was around uh, 12 years ago, uh, no, 14 years ago, uh, si Presidente Joseph Estrada, you know, is, he was uh, in the legal team and the defense. And now we have with us, of course, Attorney Raymond Fortun. Ngayon, Attorney Raymond, we were talking about this earlier. Ngayon, uh, headlines uh, just a couple of days ago, na ang uh, ombudsman, ano ba, will recommend filing charges, uh, ganun, yung mag term nun, against... Well, they've, they've actually already resolved uh, a, a complaint filed by the DOJ. Okay, so DOJ... Gumawa ng uh, dossier or tapos sinabi, okay. ito mga tao na ito ay uh, uh, were accused of committing the crime of plunder, yes. which means uh, ang perang involved is 50 million and above. Yes, no? at least. Okay, 50 million and above. And uh, of course, sino hindi may alam no, na si Janet Lim na polis. Of course, we've been talking about senators. But now, they've zeroed in and the news is tightening. And uh, we were talking to uh, Attorney Raymond Fortune a uh, couple of days ago over the radio, just yesterday. And uh, I was startled, I was stunned, you know, na talaga palang malabong malabo na makalusot yung tatlong senador sa being arrested and actually placed behind jail. But, sir, let's go, let's, let's go there. Yeah. First of all, yung timeline. Uh, the DOJ filed a complaint. In September last year. Okay, tapos binigay nila ito sa ombudsman, ganun ba? That's correct. Ngayon yung ombudsman ngayon, In ito, yung, ito, yung, ito yung news that came out. What is the term? That they, ano bang term nito? They ano? issued a oh. joint resolution oh. basically saying that uh, after an investigation of all the evidences submitted by the DOJ mm -hmm. and getting the feedback or the responses from the respondents themselves, they arrived at the conclusion that indeed, there appears to have been certain acts which constitute as violations of our criminal laws, specifically crimes of plunder and uh, the Anti-Graft and Corrupt Practices Act. Mm -hmm. Now, on that basis, uh, they have uh, now, uh, the next step would be to now forward the, this joint resolution to the Sandigan Bayan for the issuances of warrants of arrest. Ano bang, ano bang mandate ng ombudsman? mang -imbestiga, o? That's correct. And only for government officials, That's correct. Eh? Only for government officials. Ngayon ang Sandigan Bayan, anong mandate niya? Ang mandate niya is to hear uh -oh. um, and pass upon and decide on yung mga cases uh, involving government officials uh -oh. with a salary grade higher than grade 27. Okay. In below grade 27, regular courts lang. RTC ka? Yes. Uh, okay. Ngayon, uh, recently, front pages, sabi, aside from Janet Lim Napoles, the three... Big names are Johnny Ponce and Rile, Senators Johnny Ponce and Rile, Senator uh, Bong Revilla, and Senator Jingo Estrada. Yes. So, paki ulit nga yung sinabi mo sa akin na nagulat ako noon. Na, uh, so, ngayon, sabi ng ombudsman sa Sandigan Bayan, ganun ba? Yes, valid. Okay. Uh, they, they had found basis, okay. not, uh, meaning that legal term is called probable cause. Okay. They found probable cause to charge uh, 10 people for plunder. Sino ba yung mga iba? Mga congressmen din yata o mga chiefs of no. staff? Um, meron chiefs of staff, oh. uh, yung si Je Jessica Reyes, okay. uh, si Pauline Labayan, at saka si uh, uh, Attorney Cambe. Okay. And then yung mga tao naman ni Janet Napoles would be ah. brother niya si Reynald Lim. Okay. And um, 
I think one more, no, si the Asis. And then the last one uh, is this person who testified very recently in the Senate Blue Ribbon, Ribbon Committee hearings, no, si uh, Ruby Tuason. Okay. She was also charged with plunder. Okay. Ngayon, what is going to happen? Anong timeline ito? Ano mangyayari? Ito okay. nakakakilabot eh. Sige, go ahead. Okay, so um, uh, assuming that the joint resolution was given to the respondents uh, today, then they have five days from today within which to file what is known as a motion for reconsideration. Uh, this motion is basically to ask the ombudsman to reconsider its earlier finding of probable cause and to dismiss the complaint against them. Now, uh, the assumption here is that uh, obviously th there was already a first resolution, meaning that the ombudsman had found basis. Mm. So the motion for reconsideration is, um, shall we say, part of the process, uh -huh. but uh, it is highly unlikely that the ombudsman is going to change its mind. Okay. So you can expect that it's going to be denied, okay. uh, which, should be, which is going to happen probably in 15 to 20 days from now. It's going to happen very quickly okay. because, um, as you know, issues like this, uh, they have to be resolved quickly. Otherwise, there will be a semblance or a perception that the uh, wheels of justice are turning very slowly. Okay. Uh -huh. So you expect that these things will be moving very fast. So that being the case, upon the denial of the motion for reconsideration, the ombudsman is immediately going to forward the entire case records to the Sandigan Bayan. It will file a, what is known as a criminal case. Immediately, Ann. Right? Uh, All right, that's okay. right. Probably maximum um, fifteen days. Um, I can I can say end of the month. Okay, so again. By the end of the month, All or right. at worst, Jan would be mga first week of May. Okay. And you can expect again, um, there will be a another motion, a runner round of motion, and it's called the motion for judicial determination of probable cause. Uh, that is to ask the Sandigan Bayan who will handle the case, um, judge. Tingnan nyo nga mabuti yung ebidensya mm. na ipinorward ng ombudsman because it appears that there is no basis to issue a warrant of okay. arrest. Now, the, um, the Sandigan Bayan has 10 days to resolve that. Okay. I expect it to be much quicker than that. Okay. And uh, I expect the Sandigan Bayan to go ahead and issue the warrants of arrest. So at the latest, I mean from your time frame, mga middle of uh, May, yeah, probably mid first May. or first or second week of May. There so, will matagal be na yung mid-May? Yes. Matagal yes. na yun. So, by mid-May, uh, again, can you please repeat this? What is the probability that the Sandigan Bayan will issue warrants of arrest, especially to Juan Ponce Enrile, to Jingo Estrada, and to uh, Bong Revilla? Yeah, considering the amount of evidence involved, uh -huh. no, ang pinag-uusapan lang dito is probable cause. No? Uh -huh. The court does not have to determine already guilt or innocence okay. at this Probable stage. cause lang ito. Probable cause. Uh -huh. Just, kung baga sana, pag sign probable cause, mukhang merong krimen na nangyari uh -huh. at mukhang itong mga taong ito uh -huh. ang siyang gumawa nito. Okay. That's all. Okay. So that being the case, uh, probability of a warrant of arrest being issued, I'd say probably 95 to 98 percent. What would prevent it from being issued? Well, if uh, somehow the, the respondents, the accused uh, now, ano, uh, would be able to come out with a really, really strong argument, uh, where it, which would make the Sandigan Bayan do a double take, no? really mm. to scrutinize all the evidences. Um, I'll, I'll give you an example. For example, the argument is that you can't find a single signature in in, uh, that mm. I made in any of these documents. That can be, that can okay. be looked at. Because no? uh, if it's all purely circumstantial evidence, meaning he said, she said, uh. sinabi lamang ni Ben Herloy, sinabi lamang ni Ganyan, uh, no, you need stronger evidence than that. Something which uh, would really pin down the person to pero it. Pero legal luminaries ang mga DOJ at ombudsman, di ba? I mean, I don't think they'll commit uh, some, some elementary blunder like that, di kaya? I mean... I've, I've seen it happen. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no? Uh, uh, yeah, okay. I, you I, should. I know you as should a know. fact. I know uh, as a fact, uh, you know, that uh, some cases that are being forwarded uh, to the courts uh, are not really substantiated. Okay, meron bang, is there a chance that this is really political harassment? Meron bang, from, 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 uh, I don't know how preview you are to what's happening, pero at least yung mga hearing na napapanood natin sa TV, yung mga lumalabas sa mga pahayagan, the, the reports, based on that, does it look like it's political harassment? Or? I would think that it's political harassment simply because you're oh. only seeing opposition senators being charged in court. 
if I can remember it right, way back in September 2013, Justice Secretary De Lima promised, mm -hmm. promised to file a second batch of, of complaints, and this time including administration, congressmen, and senators. Mm -hmm. Hindi nangyari. O hindi pa nangyayari? Well, they should have done it already. It's ah, okay. been six months. No? I mean, wala namang problema yung madelay lang ng konti, pero kung parang ganito lumalabas is they just concentrated only on certain personalities who are obviously associated with the political opposition. Mm -hmm. Then, personally, if that is the case, there may be a strong ground ano, to charge political persecution. Pero okay lang pa-prove. Hirap naman siguro i-prove noon. It can be proven in the sense nga that uh, up to this date, nobody from the uh, allied with the present dispensation has been charged. Mm -hmm. Alam mo, wala namang problema, Jerry, with charging government officials for corruption. But if you're gonna charge people, kailangan pantay-pantay. You have to treat everybody fairly because uh, that's what Lady Justice is. No, mm -hmm. it is, It's a person that has a blindfold and a weighing scale. Meaning that if it, somebody had committed a crime, let the acts fall wherever it may, mm -hmm. regardless of whether you're the kamag-anak or you're the kaibigan or that you dine out and, and probably fire pistols with the president. Mm -hmm. I mean, there should be no preferential treatment. And everybody who committed a crime, who committed, uh, who committed corruption, should be charged properly. Okay. Pero as of now, dun sa showing, dun sa cards lang na showing, dun sa mga okay. balita lang, dun sa mga na charge lang, what uh, we are looking at now is really a legal political hotspot in the sense that there is the impending arrest and incarceration without bail of three Philippine senators. Ngayon siguro hindi na tayo magugulat dyan. Bakit? E ginawa nila kay Arab Strada. Yeah. Involved ka ron, directly. They've uh, done it to uh, Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. Of course, uh, siguro in deference to their uh, positions of being heads of state, Eh, okay na rin ang house arrest. Pangit naman siguro kung ilagay sila sa munting lupa. What, uh, hindi naman to Pyongyang. Or, <laughs> di ba? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, uh, what is your fearless forecast, uh, Attorney Raymond Fortun? Ano ang gagawin ng tatlo? May iwang kaya sila? Because pwede nilang gawin. As of now, pinag-usapan natin to. Pwede na silang umalis ng bayan. Wala pang hold departure. At huwag na silang bumalik claiming political persecution, di ba? Citing the facts that you just mentioned, yes. kami lang ang pinuntiriya, hindi naman kasali yung mga kam kakampi nila, hindi kinasuhan. So, anong fearless forecast mo? Ano, meron bang may iwan? Meron matitira? Aalis lahat? May iwan lahat? Well, uh, as I, as I uh, told you about a couple of days ago, mm -hmm. no? uh, my, my belief is that well, those who are it would really be political political suicide mm -hmm. for any senator right now to not to face the courts. I, I remember way back uh, in during Arab's time, no, there were actually two attempts for him to leave the country, mm -hmm. even uh, before the warrant of arrest came. And Arab said, "No, no, uh, I'm not going to do that." Mm. Yes. Even at that time, he already understood the political repercussions of fleeing mm -hmm. and, and evading arrest because of an impending uh, criminal complaint. No? Uh, it's just going to mean suicide. And look what happened to Arab. Because of his decision to stay here, bear the, the misery of being incarcerated for six years, and of course, being given now the opportunity to present his evidence, and as it turns out, no? Uh, Rightly or wrongly, he mm. was convicted but subsequently pardoned. Mm. You can see that uh, in a quick span of time, uh, 2010, he almost won the elections. Okay. Kung hindi lamang na, no, kung hindi lamang na, you know, na if it wasn't Ninoy Aquino, uh, no, no, no Aquino yes. he was facing, he would have been president <laughs> in 2010. You can see the public uh, perception of uh, his decision to stay and to face the court. Okay. The people were, one, willing to listen to him. Two, they were willing to forgive him if there was any mm. sins committed. And you can see as well, 2013, vindicated. Uh, he was elected as mayor of Manila. Okay, babalikan natin yan because there are still uh, some loose ends in that discussion. Yeah. Like Ping Lakson, umalis, bumalik, naging ngayon presidential advisor. You're watching Open House with Jerry Cornejo. Our guest is Attorney Raymond Fortune, and we'll be back right after this. Stay tuned.
Welcome back to Open House with Jerry Corneo, where we feature people, places, and things that are in the news or who should be in the news. Our topic is the law and legal hotspots. First segment, we were talking about the practice of law. Who should go into law and what to expect if you are a lawyer in the Philippines? Yung second segment po natin, medyo bitin pa, no? Because uh, we, were, we will finish this, this now and go into other topics, but into one more topic. But we were talking about the case of plunder, which uh, hinaharap po, which are hinaharap ni na Senators Juan, Juan Ponce Enrile, Bong Revilla, and Jingo Estrada, and several others. And uh, according to our... Uh, legal advisor and our lawyer, si Attorney Raymond Fortun, there is very little doubt na makakawala sila rito. In other words, magkakaroon ng warrant of arrest, magkakaroon ng kulungan, ha? and we're talking about not far from now, we're talking about mid-May, which is just around the corner. So now, meron naman mga, ano, Attorney Raymond Fortun, balik tayo sa'yo. I mean, we're talking about uh, should they leave? Should they stay? And you said if they leave, political suicide yan. Yes. Si Erap, pinanindigan niya. Sabi niya, hindi, hindi ako, hindi ako alas. I'll stay here and face the music. Which he did, you know. And many people, I guess, admired him for that. No? Yes. Ngayon, of course, uh, na-pardon siya eventually. And, uh, well, most of this, those six years, he was really house arrest. House arrest, di ba? Karamihan, yes. no, no? Of course, he had to go through that uh, horrible experience of being put in a cell. What's ano, a veteran's memorial where he uh -oh. wasn't even given a, a chance to sun himself. Oh, pero yung iba yung selda. Iba yung selda na behind bars na meron kang, ano, you know, a, a cot, no? I mean, considering he came from Malacanang and he's, uh, you know, I mean, uh, he's always uh, grown up in luxury, you know. Anyway, ngayon, political, ano nga, ano, political suicide, kung mag-alisan si na Enrile, si Eh, Revilla at si Estrada. Yeah. Pero, anong pag-asa kaya nila? I mean, uh, magiging, could they do an ERAP if they stay? Eh, kung nakakulong sila, because I remember when we discussed this also, at talaga nakulong itong tatlong ito, while the case is ongoing, walang bail. That's so correct. they'll be behind bars. Yes. Now, will they get house arrest? Will they get, ano mangyayari nito? What, what do you think is going to happen? Let's say, they decide to, ah, paninindigan namin to. Hindi kami tatakbo because we are innocent, so on and so forth. So, the arrest warrant comes. Uh, they get arrested. Do you think they'll get special treatment in the sense na, di ba, baka si Johnny Ponce Enrile, pwede at 90 years old. Yes. You know, I mean, it might really be, so hospital ka na lang. Yes. Eh, pero yung dalawa, malalakas yung mga yun eh. Si Pogi at saka si Sexy. <laughs> eh, what, what, what do you think is going to happen? I, I would expect that there will be attempts or moves on the part of their lawyers to provide a preferential kind of treatment for them. Okay. No? Uh, simply because they are, they are special kind of personalities. Okay. Um, there will be one group, the opposing side, who is going to insist that they be treated like uh, no differently from oh, any other Behind bars yan, kalaboso yeah. yan. Oh. On the other hand, there will be a certain segment even of our populace no, na, uh, who would like to see. Because th the thing is, is that they are still presumed innocent mm -hmm. until they are proven guilty. So, in the meantime, they do have a certain status in our society. They are senators. Yes, yes. And uh, mga Pilipino tayo eh. No? Hindi tayo yung mga katulad sa ibang bansa, I mean, with all due deference mm -hmm. to them, who will treat them like common criminals. Mm -hmm. Sa atin hindi eh. No, we, we respect uh, personalities. Mm -hmm. um, and until the court has come out and, and found them guilty beyond reasonable doubt, then they will be accorded the respect that is due them being uh, people who have uh, attained a certain status in our in our country. So, malamang yan, house arrest. Ay, nakikita ko po uh, na when I say preferential treatment, at the very least, uh, baka ilagay sila sa NBI, okay. or probably nakakulong sila sa Camp Krame, okay. or probably like uh, Janet Napoles. Di ba? Yes. He was, he, uh, she's in, ano, she's in Fort Santo Domingo. Uh, no? Totally separate. Pero may sariling bahay yun. Yes. We need to do that for, for very obvious reasons. Uh, they are special type of prisoners. You cannot include them together with the others. Uh, again, there may be people who will get mad at me. Sabihin niya ganun, anong pagkakaiba? No? Mm. Pare, pareho dapat ang pagtrato dyan. Because in fact, that they have such a they have sinned against the country for for such a huge amount mm. no, of money 
na dapat napunta na sana doon sa mga common na tao. No? Pero uh, still, the fact remains is that uh, they were voted into office by a, a, ano, a, a plurality uh, of votes. Uh. By millions of votes. No? So, and that is something that we just cannot uh, discount. No? Hindi ito ordinaryong mga tao. And ako, I am always in favor of according due respect to personalities until until they are found guilty beyond reasonable doubt. That's how I argued it during Arab's case. Uh, and you will notice, the public will notice, once uh, GMA placed Arab dun sa rest house niya sa Tanay, uh, you didn't hear too much from me from then mm -hmm. on. Para sa akin, I felt uh, okay, binigyan yeah. nyo, binigyan nyo uh -huh. ng, tam, ng karampatang respeto yung office of the president. Uh -huh. Not necessarily Arab, but the office itself. Okay, now... Palagay na lang natin na uh, sabi mo, this is going to take years to resolve. Yes, definitely. This is not going to happen uh, uh, ano, very upon, upon whose uh, efforts, efforts ng defense? No. Um, Kasi ayaw nilang, uh, I mean like, bakit tumatagal? Kasi usually, yung, yung mga respondent, ang raming pinapresenta ibang evidence to prove na hindi totoo yan. Ito, testigo, ito, dokumento. Diba usually I'm under the impression because the prosecution would like to end this as soon as possible. Well, yes. Uh -oh. the, the problem is, is that physically, you know, hindi naman tayo pe we, we can't have continuous hearings. Um, the stenographers are, are not able to reproduce the transcript of stenographic notes in quick enough time so that they can be useful for the succeeding hearings. Um, mar malamang kasi parate, madalas nangyayari, Jerry, is that, for example, let's say you have one hearing here. Uh, for today, and you have a witness on the stand. So necessarily, if you're going to cross-examine that person, you're going to ask the question, isn't it that you said during your direct mm. that, kahit dun sa ganun lang kalit na bagay, nagtatalo na yan. Because of course, the other side is going to say, that's not what he said. Mm. And what's your, what would be the referee? And what would, it, what would uh, break the, the conflict? It is a transcript. It's the record of the proceedings. Now, in the impeachment uh, court, uh, both for ERAP as well as for CJ, for CJ Corona, oh, oh. they had special a special group of stenographers. In fact, uh, if I remember it right, may, there was a rotation being done. Mm. And like one stenographer would like take down about two hours of testimony and then he or she will be replaced by another stenographer and so forth. So, mas madali yung trabaho. That is actually what speeds it up. You will notice that you need to have a special court for it, like an impeachment court. It has to be a totally separate court. Why? Because if it is the regular courts, yung Sandigan Bayan, the Sandigan Bayan, there are five divisions right now. But you're talking about all the other criminal cases that have been filed uh, against uh, all the other government uh, employees no, mm -hmm. of salary grade 27 and higher. What happens to those cases? Is everything going to stop simply because of this? Hindi. So that's the problem. There now has to be a scheduling going on no, in order so that all of these cases have, can now be given um, the light of day in uh, front of the court. How long did it take for President Joseph Estrada from the time he was arraigned to conviction, ilan taon? It took us six years. Six years. Seventy-five witnesses for the prosecution, seventy-five okay. witnesses for the defense, and we had twice a week, twice, two hearings per week. So six years convicted, pardon. Yes, that's okay. correct. Okay, ngayon, eto ngayon, so minimum nito, five, six years, even more? <sighs> Kay Erap, kay Erap, we were looking at only four accused. No, it was Erap, Jingoy, Ed Serapio, and yeah, and tatlo lang sila actually na nililitis ng time niyon. Just three people. It took us six years. Here we're looking at now ten people being charged with plunder. Okay. Okay. Assume na natin ano that each Enrile will have a separate case, Jingoy will have a separate case, Bong Revilla will have a separate case. We're looking at easily, and and there are. And really has been charged with the 15 counts of graft aside from plunder, together with Napoles and the two others. Uh, easily another s uh, six to seven years, no? same as ERAP. And that's again under the assumption that they are going to schedule two hearings per week. Papa pardon kaya sila. I mean, because at that time, in six years, iba ng pangulo. And we don't even know kung sinong anong faction na mananalo. Kung oh, yeah. yung sa opposition o sa administration. Ngayon, uh, Mga ganong kasalanan ba? Mga ganong krimen? Can the next president grant executive uh, clemencies, is that the word, to, to all of them? 
Yung tatlong senador na yan, pardon yan. Guilty but pardon. Pwede ba yan? Uh, it, it is always a possibility, ah, okay. especially if we're looking at the political dimension. Eh, no? okay. You correctly pointed it out. Oh. No? Uh, there can be a conviction later on down the road, but uh, if the president uh, who, is, who wins in the next election happens to be from the opposition, then uh, it's something that can actually happen. Oh. Okay? And you know, this is something that a lot of people don't know. 2001, chinarged sila si President Estrada. By October 2003, meaning uh, just a few months before the 2004 elections, we were already told you know, that Erap uh, was going to be convicted and then he would be subsequently pardoned. You were told? Yes, we Why? were told. Um, I am not at liberty to tell <laughs> okay. you. Uh -huh. so, but we had already been, been pointedly told, your, your client is going to be convicted. Mm. For and political reasons. I guess. Well, it's, it's obvious uh, no? because uh, uh, if he was not convicted, then the basis for GMA's assumption to power okay. in 2001 okay. would now be put in question. Okay, no? yeah, Baka uh, merong mga tao who would later say, oh, acquitted naman pala si Erap. Balik uh, nyo na Malacanang yan right. kasi merong right siya na, ano, na maging presidente. Uh, there was no basis to charge him at all. Eh, pero tapos na yung term niya eh. In, ano, eh uh, there were some legal uh, uh, theories okay. being posited uh, that he should be allowed to serve the remainder of his term. Mm. I personally was not uh, in favor of that no, because uh, the constitution is pretty clear na dapat we should have uh, presidential Continuous. elections every six uh, years. Okay, uh, so, but there is, there was a legal position to the effect that uh, Erap basically was uh, robbed mm -hmm. of his uh, presidency beginning 2001. And as it were, if he is found to be acquitted, then he should be allowed to re, re shall we say, to use up the, the remainder of his term. No? And, you know, it's, it's a legal conundrum. Mm -hmm. well, definitely aket pa ng Supreme Court yun if it does happen, if it did happen. But, uh, you know, it, it's something that could have happened. But that's why Erap could not have been acquitted. Uh, there was no legal reason, there was no political and, and moral reason no, to, to allow him to get acquitted. So we, we knew that to happen. So our, our only intention at the time was really just to let the Filipino people decide. This is the charge. These are the evidences uh, to defend President Estrada. Mm. You all be the judge. Anyway, we have already been told that, the, that he was going to get convicted anyway, regardless of whatever evidence that he presents. Okay na lang sin sa amin. Basta yung publiko ang makakaalam, ito yung mga depensa ni Erap, kayo na maghusga. And we were okay. fine with that. All right. So, if you just tuned in, we're finishing in a few seconds. Let me just tell you, uh, in a nutshell, the gist of this uh, latter conversation, according to Attorney Raymond Fortune, who has been a lawyer for 25 years, Itong nangyayari ngayon sa lipunan natin will result in the arrest of the accused. Tama ba? Yes. Will result in the arrest of the accused. Which means, maaresto si Senator Juan Ponce Enrile, si uh, Jingo Estrada, at si Bong Revilla. Si Janet Napoles, nakakulong na eh, no? For a different crime. But then, abangan. And it's gonna happen soon, according to uh, Attorney Raymond Fortune. And... Uh, Everything, a lot of the things he has been saying has been coming true. So he has a very good batting average. Anyway, Thank attorney, uh, one minute po, nakikinig sa inyong ating bayan, if you have any address for them. This, this is another great time really for, for lawyers no? and, and the legal profession in general. So uh, I would like to invite the fresh graduates, those who just graduated from college, no? uh, do... Uh, see the majesty of the law at its finest and probably at its worst. If you feel that this is something that you would like to, to do as a profession, to uphold the uh, justice, to help the oppressed, and probably to send uh, those who have committed crimes against our country to jail and to uh, pay back, uh, to pay for what they've done, uh, do consider enrolling uh, in your nearest law school <laughs> and, um, well, no? Let's see what you can do and hope to see you all uh, in court one day. All right. Hindi as ano, ha? Hindi as not as a respondent. Ha? No, oh. On the opposite <laughs> side. Panyero, panyero. Oh, on the opposite okay. side. Maraming salamat, things. Attorney so Raymond Fortune. Thank you very much. And I'm sure this has been enlightening for you. And, uh, well, let's see what happens. And thank you very much for staying with us during the past hour. Until next week, take care. I love you. God bless you.